So we're going to cover control as a function management. It is the last step, our last function. There's planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. It is the last function, um, and it is done on a repetitive basis as a management function where you ensure what is supposed to happen in the organization is happening. You are measuring, um, as you monitor, you are measuring what is happening against the goals that were set for the organization, and then you are taking corrective action um, to ensure that the goals are going to be met. Sometimes that corrective action doesn't need to happen. Instead, it's just an action to reward or acknowledge the completion of the work and that it is aligned and going well. And other times it's actually corrective action that requires uh, a negative adjustment um, in order to ensure that the outcome is positive for achieving the goal. So we do control as one of the functions to make sure um, that we can adapt to change and that we can see irregularities or errors happening in a process, either in hindsight or live. Um, we can reduce costs, um, increase productivity, or add value. We can also detect opportunities um, and look at ways to make something more efficient if we have control happening. Um, and then last two things, you, with control, you can make sure also that you are able to get feedback on performance, and then you would utilize um, the, the management of control lets you utilize what you're um, evaluating for decision making and also facilitate great teamwork. So the steps of control, you first set a standard or a goal, then you measure the performance of what's actually happening, then you compare, um, and by the way, measuring is called, met you, can, you can have it lead to a metric or a, de or a tracked outcome um, of each step in a process. Um, so the four steps, again, establish the standard measure or perform or performance through a metric, compare it against the goal, and then you take corrective action. That's the steps in um, control. So um, I'm going to give an example of a metric uh, that I utilized in a workplace. Um, when I was a manager of um, operations, I was actually a manager of operations at a large HMO. Um, it was where we had customer services claims and enrollment. And then another department under me was called the EDI department where I automated all the potential areas for improvement using technology. So I ran a department with those divisions in it. And we had many performance measures uh, that were tracked to make sure that we were not only producing proper volumes and that we were going to meet quotas and goals for the productivity, but we were also um, ensuring managing processes and control for quality checks and for future planning of staffing, which came a lot down to um, the number of transactions we did, how fast performance was, and changes that would occur in the process sometimes um, needed to be factored in, which would reveal themselves through me monitoring um, and reviewing the, the data of, of monitoring processes. So one specific example of a metric is that we track the number of claims processed per hour um, for claims. And that meant how many claims can you data enter in an hour? We did benchmarks to see what other comp companies were doing in our industry. And we also did an actual test in-house. And we found that five hours a day of productivity should be able to deliver 50 claims entered per day. Um, and that was basically based on a 10 per hour quota and using a five hour day. Um, so with that, I was able to receive data on that metric from my um, operational manager. She was the team leader who was responsible to make sure that the, the process of control was happening. Her job was to make sure and provide daily reports of the number of claims and many other metrics as well in a daily report of productivity and quality for her department that she frontline managed. That means the control was happening at the operational level. Um, you know, uh, we obviously can control things at the strategic and tactical level um, for middle and upper level managements. But in this particular example, the metric of how many claims were processed per hour for the claims processing department, that was done at the operational frontline level by my team leader. The other thing is control is done in different types of control. Um, there's feed forward, which is used for insight to avoid future um, concerns or problems. It basically collects the information and you monitor a process after it happens, not while it happens. And that way you are collecting data and managing a process retrospectively. Um, in this case, I am our control mechanism for 
managing claims processing volumes was a retrospective feed forward type of control because we were using a measure that was tracked after it was done every day to see if the claims processing staff entered the quota of 50 claims per day. And when they did not, we would then be in a position using feed forward controls and a metric of number of claims per hour. If they were not meeting the quota, then we would put in place a corrective action plan, which typically if they were underproducing and it was identified that it wasn't because of um, an unique situation, which does happen, outlier, um, then we would move forward with a training plan or if training wasn't an option and we discovered that the person hated their job, were just terrible at it, but were good in other areas, then we would consider realigning that resource for another function in the department because there are many other areas that we always needed to staff. So we use that metric to manage in a um, feed forward method daily to look at performance and to make sure that we were aligning the staff properly. If um, we weren't meeting our goals, then we had to either put someone else in the position or train that person. That was the corrective action we would take. Um, and so uh, we have answered essentially what is control and also the type of control, which was um, feed forward. And also we answered who was doing the control. So that's an example. Some of the other metrics that we track just for information's sake, um, because I manage a claim center, a call center, and a an enrollment department, we also track things like the number of calls for the customer service center that were dropped um, before they actually received a customer service rep, which would have been an indicator if we have a high call drop rate, that would have been an indicator of a deficient call technology or a deficient um, handling of our volume of calls. And so we would use those, use that. That's an example of another measure, a metrics. Um, another good example would have been um, the average call time. We tracked that as well to make sure we were in line with um, satisfaction drop and call rates, um, call times. And um, so that's it. So in a nutshell, I um, utilize the control function often and ensuring that we were meeting our goals and meeting performances in our company. Thank you very much, Stephanie Bialis.